and it's here, the video that completes the trilogy. Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Rock Me BS. Today I bring you the third video in my mini-series of TBRs for August and September. If you notice, the title of this video is what I'll be reading, possibly, probably. The thing is that I need to catch up because I'm in the middle of too many books. I keep starting new ones. It's a sickness. I'm s I can't say anything for myself. There are some books that I really wanted to tell you about that I was going to be reading because I think they are very cool. <laughs> and maybe you would be interested in them. I look forward to me reviewing them. Also because I need certain structure in my head. If not, I'm going to explode. So that's one thing. And you know, I do a podcast in Spanish. And so there are some books that I really need to read for that, that I can't not read. So I will start with those actually. First we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. This has been on like three or four TBRs of mine, quite honestly, but it's time and I have to get to it. The thing is that I started it once and I was enjoying it. It's just that life happened and then my brain associates reading that with being super tired and like super overwhelmed by life. I will, I will read this and so you will get a review soon. So don't worry about that. Then I also have to read Love in Times of Cholera. This, of course, is an edition in Spanish. Gabriel Garcia Marquez is one of my favorite authors of all time. He is, again, one of those authors that I discovered really young in my reading life and I fell in love with because he showed me the possibilities of writing and literature and that's amazing. I've never read this and this edition is illustrated. I have the matching um, 100 Years of Solitude edition so I'm very excited. Oh, it's illustrated. Opens it in a, in a page without illustrations. I'm so sorry. So it has pages like this with little droplet cutouts and then if you turn the page, illustrations. It's amazing. I'm very excited. I'm finally going to read this. It's been too long since I've read Garcia Marquez and I don't know why I do that to myself. One body read that I'm doing is Sherlock Holmes. We're reading a Sherlock Holmes book every month. We started with The Study in Scarlet. You'll see the review next week and then we are moving on with The Sign of Four and I'm going to skip in a way, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, because I already read that. For now, we have The Sign of Four. I'm very excited. I don't know why The Sign of Four has always appealed to me so much. I've never read it. It's just, I feel like I will really like it. I hope I do. I really enjoyed The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. A Study in Scarlet was interesting. There were things I liked. There were things that were um, questionable in my mind. I'll talk about that next week, but yeah excited about this one. Also, this finishes up my first volume of the four volume Sherlock Holmes complete illustrated editions of these beautiful heirloom classics. So I'm pumped. And then three books um, that I'm, oh, four. So, oh, but one is like uh, Plays by Edward Albee. This has The Death of Bessie Smith, The Sandbox and The American Dream. Apart from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, I've also read at uh, home at the zoo which is a whole thing in, on its own but i really enjoyed the at uh, the zoo part it was amazing i really like edward albee is what i'm trying to say i really connect with his histrionic dialogue i think he gets something very primal in a very absurdist way but it never rings for me at least gimmicky i don't know there's something in there that really connects with what i like to see in theater and how i like to think of theater and plays and I don't know to how many of these I'll get. I think I'll try to read all three, but my idea is just read one, you know, one sitting kind of theater experience and then see how I feel about continuing. They're all three very short. So I'm very excited to see where they go. I would like to tell you more about what they are about, but I don't remember anymore. I bought that book so many years ago. I read what they were about at some point, but I forgot. I have three more books. The Russian classic. You thought I'd forgotten about my Russian classics project because I never follow through on anything. Yes, I know you thought that, but no, it's still here. I want to read The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. More than excited. There's a cat, there's a devil. I have this beautiful Penguin Deluxe Edition and this is translated by Richard Pibir and Larissa Volokonsky, who were the ones who translated Dead Souls I'll be also reviewing that book in the next video. I mean, I'm going to divide my July wrap up into two again, but in one of those videos, I'll review that souls and I'll talk about the translation, but I'll just say for now that it was amazing. So I'm very excited to finally be getting to 
this. Then I have an Ishiguro book, The Unconsoled by Kazuo Ishiguro. You know, I love this edition. I think it's so elegant and beautiful. It's chunkier than I expected. I've read three Ishiguro books, a couple of his short stories. I've enjoyed all except Never Let Me Go, which I really, really didn't like. I thought it was so bland and although I see the point and although one of the books that I've used for research analyzes Never Let Me Go, so believe you me, I am very familiar with everything it does. I think it's one of his worst books that I read. In any case, I've also read A Pale View of Hills, which I really liked, and then An Artist of the Floating World, which I loved. And this, I only know it's about a pianist. It was all it took. No, but you know why I got it right away? It's because I've been wanting to read The Remnants of the Day. I own that book, but I don't have it here and I don't have access to it at the moment because of quarantine, of course. So this is kind of the replacement. It was like, oh, an Ishiguro book, which I've been craving about a pianist. I need to read this right now. My hand is killing me. Finally, of course, I couldn't not include a music book and I have Why Mahler, How One Man and Ten Symphonies Changed the World by Norman Lebrecht. Now, I read The Maestro Myth a couple of months ago, actually. I have lost all sense of time. I will leave the link to that wrap up down below. Yeah, it was in my June wrap up, but I started in May. That's why it feels so far away, but not that much. In August already, oh my God, okay. Sorry. <laughs> this, I don't know about you guys. I didn't really know about Mahler until very recently when I started to get more and more into classical music. And I get the feeling that Mahler is very much a musician's composer, if you see what I mean. I was like shocked <laughs> when I first experienced Mahler and now I've seen like the Keeping Score documentaries on Mahler. I will link those down below because they are So now I want to know more. That's it, that's, that's all I have to say about this. I realize I've talked more about myself than the book itself, but the book is about Mahler and his music and that is why I want to read it. And I liked another book by the author and I'll tell you how it is when I read it. I mean, this video is not going to be very long, but imagine if I cut everything I've said that isn't like strictly about the books. It would be an even shorter, more pragmatic video, but clearly that's not what I'm about these days. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please tell me what you will be reading during August. Are you participating in Women in Translation Month? Remember, I have a TBR for that, link down below, but I just really, really want to encourage people to join. It's so important and I'm super excited. These months are going to be great. I'm also going to use the opportunity, as I said, to finish up some books. I'm excited to be telling you about that because I've been enjoying a lot of books that I can't talk about at the moment because I haven't finished them. I mean, I could, but you know, please uh, comment and please wait for the July wrap up. Lots of fantastic books on the way. And that's it. See you next time.